Am I not surprised that the New York Jets are in the tabloids? Am I not surprised that the New York Jets are being talked about in the newspaper? And it's not all good. A lot of the stories is with Denzel Mims. Now, I have always liked Denzel Mims. When they drafted him from Baylor a few years ago in the second round, one of the top 13 wide receivers drafted in the first two rounds, the most ever in NFL history drafted in the first two rounds. And he was one of the guys that I believe was a steal for the New York Jets. I thought he was a late first round, early second round pick. He fell into the middle of the second round. The Jets traded down twice And still got Denzel Mims. And Denzel Mims looked good his first year with Adam Gase. Looked sensational. A lot of people thought out of the 14 wide receivers that were drafted early in the draft, he was a top five. And then he got sick and he got hurt and he was out for a significant amount of time. And then the next year he got sick again and couldn't stay healthy. And then Robert Sala comes in and he just didn't fit the offense. From day one, he couldn't understand the offense. It's very hard to understand. Kyle Shanahan's offense is very strategic and different. A lot of schematic situations where you have to put yourself in a position to make plays in the open field. And he can't. He's had a lot of problems understanding the plays, the play calling. And he's fallen out of touch with the coaching staff. And the coaches have practically given up on Denzel Mims. They drafted Elijah Moore in Robert Sala's first year, early second round pick, who showed you why they drafted him early in the season before he got hurt. Having over 500 yards and five touchdowns, he led the team in practically every mathematical statistic, and he barely played a full season. After Robert Sala drafted Elijah Moore, he decided to bring in a veteran in Corey Davis who honestly didn't have a great season in a full 17-game season. But the first few games, he looked like he was the reason why the Jets brought him in. A good red zone target and a good big body for Zach Wilson to throw to. And then he got hurt. And then he was out for practically the whole season. That whole Jets offense in the first year of Robert Sala's existence as the Jets head coach was hurt. So in the offseason, you would think Denzel Mims was practicing, figuring out, reading and watching video and trying to figure out What plays are what and where he fits in the scheme? No, he didn't. He got sick again, lost 20 pounds, stayed away from the facilities, lost muscle mass, got slower, came back, and the team just didn't understand why this kid has not developed into the player they thought he was at the age of 24. And now this past year, they decided, you know what? We're giving up on Denzel Mims. We're going in the first 10 picks. We've got one extra pick because we traded a big loudmouth to Seattle. (laughs) And they draft Garrett Wilson at number 10. And Garrett Wilson's going to be a star in this league. Everybody knows it. So now there is no room for Denzel Mims anymore. And Denzel Mims knows it. Especially when they bring in Conklin and Uzma, Brees Hall, Michael Carter. They don't have any room for another offensive weapon. At least a loudmouth offensive weapon that has done nothing on the football field. Except complain and not develop his skills and make his skills. And I love Denzel Mims. And I hope wherever he goes or wherever he gets traded, he succeeds. But not on this team. This team has given up on him. Robert Sala, who's a really, really nice guy. If he's given up on you, there has to be a reason. Yeah, Robert Sala is the one who will stand up for his players all the time. And if he doesn't like you, that's definitely something concerning with you. And Denzel Mims, even though he didn't fit the scheme necessarily last year and wasn't able to grow his route running and stuff like that, you would think you would have a role as a specialist potentially too. And that even now will not be the case because two tight ends later, a second round running back later, even Corey Davis taking over a lot of that role because they brought in Garrett Wilson who could do a lot more of the more sophisticated route running, Elijah Moore who could do a lot more of the versatile, quickness-based motion stuff that Mike LaFleur likes to bring, and even Braxton Berrios, who overperformed for the Jets last year in what was a very lost season for them. You're not going to have that role either now, so all of a sudden the coaching staff is shying away from that also trying to like I mentioned use a lot of different concepts now because the Jets tight ends were basically non-existent for a long time and now they actually have two that they can use as well and the running backs they've had some good running backs in certain years but again nothing like a duo like this in Brees Hall and Michael Carter Brees Hall who also could be a good pass catching guy too very shifty did very well receiving yards wise at Iowa State and Michael Carter who we saw last season was a very good weapon out of the backfield as well and a good route runner so yeah you're going to lose a lot of leverage in 
that situation when it comes to trying to get playing time. In terms of the trade value, we've heard anywhere from a third to a fifth round pick. I think most likely a fourth round pick seems like the most likely. I know we were mentioning on the Sports Lab Mouse a couple of teams, the Packers, the mm-hmm. Ravens. You said Washington as Washington, well. Washington, maybe yep. the Bears. Justin Fields right now needs a weapon, and why not? The Bears are very highly connected with Joe Douglas. He's worked for the Baltimore Ravens. He's got connections with Green Bay, obviously with Robert Sala and Matt LaFleur. And the Bears, he's very connected. And over the last couple of years, they've traded and made moves with the Washington football team as well. So it makes sense why one of those four teams could be looking for a valued wide receiver. Right. And I think Green Bay, I think, would be the most ideal fit considering not only the need with all the receiving issues they're going to have this season. Obviously, Aaron Rodgers will help aid that with his elite quarterback skills. But Aaron Rodgers has always done well with big-bodied receivers, too. So I think that's the perfect guy to be able to rebirth Denzel Mims in terms of what he was supposed to be as a prospect coming out of Baylor. Because he has talent. He has speed. He has great contested catchability. And Aaron Rodgers has always done well with big body wide receivers. Keep in mind also big body receivers that have struggled in other places. Guys like James Jones, Jordy Nelson, guys like that, that have once they left the Packers had some issues. So maybe Denzel Mims gets that in reverse at the right time in his career. He looks like Adams. I mean, his body, everything yeah. about him. I mean, he needs to put on a little bit more weight, but Adams, when he came into the league, he was thin too. Unbelievable length, unbelievable speed. I think he could be that Adams type of player. I just don't know if Green Bay is even thinking about Denzel Mims right now. And if Robert Sala is going to go to Matt LaFleur, who, by the way, is his best friend, Matt LaFleur's best man in his wedding, he's going to say that this kid doesn't listen. This kid's not following directions. He's not going and watching tape and doing the things that he's supposed to do as a professional football player. And if he tells that to Matt LaFleur, Matt LaFleur is going to say no. That's the problem. That's the situation that... Denzel Mims is in right now, unfortunately. And a lot of those teams that would have taken the chances with off-field issues in the past, we've seen the Bengals, the Raiders, teams like that, they don't need wide receivers right now. Really, the only obvious contending teams that need them are the Packers and the Ravens. Now, Washington, too, is a kind of a fringe contender that mm-hmm. definitely could use a big body and the Bears. guy, too. Mm-hmm. The Bears aren't really a contender, but they just need wide receivers yeah. in general. And there will be other teams that definitely could use them if they maybe become later They throw the away picks all the time, the Bears, as Oh, yeah, of know, course. So. Why not throw a third-round draft pick to the New York Jets? and get your wide receiver. Nobody said the Bears were smart either. They're still stuck in the 1980s. <laughs> as far as Aaron Donald's concerned, if anybody has not seen the video on Twitter, they were practicing, the Bengals and the Rams were practicing, getting ready for their game, their last preseason game. So all these different teams, like the Jets and the Giants, practice all week against one another because they're playing on Sunday. Right. So the Rams and the Bengals, two teams that played in the Super Bowl, they're playing a preseason game. It's not important. So they were practicing on the field, and then a brawl broke out. He ripped one of the helmets off of one of the Bengals and started swinging the helmet trying to knock out half the Bengals' offensive line. And to me, as great as Aaron Donald is, and I have a lot of respect for him, anybody, one player trying to defend himself and and take on 300-pound linemen is a tough guy. But when you're trying to permanently injure somebody on a football field in a practice, going into a preseason game, that is embarrassing. That is an embarrassment to your organization. That's an embarrassment to you as a player. The NFL, honestly, should suspend him for at least one game. You're taking a helmet. You're swinging around. What happens if he hit the guy that that he took the helmet off in the head and knocked him out, gave him a concussion, could turn into CT in the future? Right. Who knows? Could you imagine that happen? And Aaron Donald thinks he can get away with it because he's the best defensive lineman we've seen since Reggie White. It is embarrassing. And the NFL should look at these videos. The videos are right in front of their faces. Mm -hmm. And the NFL should learn from the Miles Garrett incident, too. They should have suspended him and didn't end up doing it at the time, too, when it seemed like he was going to get indefinitely suspended. And Aaron Donald did something very similar. Now, granted, it was a practice versus a game, but still, it's still malicious intent swinging a helmet a helmet is a hard object you clearly have a Bengals helmet in your hand that means you clearly rip somebody else's helmet off it's not even your helmet so you're not even swinging at a guy that has a helmet on necessarily or it could be an unprotected area and Aaron Donald was swinging not one but two different times in that thing that is definitely a suspendable offense and the Rams hopefully they do the right thing and suspend him as a team but if not absolutely the NFL should get involved with this kind of thing and make an example out of this because Miles Garrett got away with it for whatever reason in 20 2019. He didn't play the rest of that season, but didn't get suspended into the 2020 season. And the NFL kind of botched it there, so they can't really afford to do that again. Yeah, I know the Rams are your precious L.A. darling. They won a Super Bowl last year. I know you're 
banking on that kind of thing to happen because they want LA football to work. Well, do the right thing and actually suspend. I think he's the best player at any position in the NFL right now. I'm not denying his talent. It's legendary. That does not give an excuse for this kind of undisciplined swinging of a helmet at multiple Bengals line. And then there's Lamar Jackson, who was offered $230 million by the Baltimore Ravens. He already spoke to the Baltimore Ravens and said that if he doesn't agree to a contract before the first game of the season, there is no contract talks until the end of the season. They're not speaking about it anymore. And maybe he's mad at the Baltimore Ravens. Who knows what's going on? Maybe because they traded away Hollywood Brown. We were speaking about that on the Sports Loudmouth. Who knows? Maybe it's because he's not getting guaranteed money like Kyler Murray is. But Lamar Jackson, he doesn't have an agent. He is his own agent. He's the only NFL player that speaks for himself, which is crazy. And he's going into a season where he's going to put his body on the line with no NFL contract. He is a running quarterback. He's not a throwing quarterback. He runs first, throws second, and he's putting himself at risk because if he doesn't sign that contract before the season starts, then he puts himself in a position that if he gets hit, he tears an ACL or tears a rotator cuff. He could be out for the season, and that means no contract for him. And he can't put himself at risk. So if I was him, and he doesn't get that contract signed, he sits out for the whole season. Very fishy market here with trying to judge this. And the Ravens, I think, did the right thing. I was worried that the Ravens were going to be too tough on him. They gave him the contract that was very similar to what Kyler Murray's it was. But it's not guaranteed. But it's not guaranteed. But again, the Browns' contract with Deshaun Watson was fully guaranteed. Is that going to be a new norm type thing? Is that what Lamar Jackson is trying to fight for? It's going to be very hard to be able to win that kind of thing. I'm not denying that the player should not get guaranteed money, but you're trying to have the whole contract be it at once an organization like the Ravens that has a lot of other talent you want to be able to win you want to be able to keep everybody and they're not going to be able to do that if you gave him that kind of money too so I think the Ravens are doing all the right things here yeah maybe you should add a little more guaranteed money maybe but beyond that I don't think they're doing anything wrong in this situation I'm with you I don't know if Lamar trusts them at this point the way they've built their team it's a receiver league now with quarterbacks passing league and that's the one position they've had trouble developing as wide receivers and maybe Lamar is frustrated at that Hollywood Brown is just one example of it, but the Ravens over the years, it seems like all their best receivers are free agent guys, so you're looking at a case where they can develop everything else, and maybe they got to figure that out if they want to keep Lamar happy long-term, with or without the contract. All the Jets and Giant fans this weekend will be the final preseason game for both teams, as they are going to be playing in the great and powerful Snoopy Ball. Who cares? The Jets are going to get to see their first team defense, their first team offense play probably the first quarter, as well as the Giants. And we'll get to see what these players and what these teams are going to do early in the game and see how strong both teams are going to be, being that you're going to get to see all the starters. So I'm excited for that. I think if you're a Jets and Giants fan, you get to see Saquon Barkley play the first quarter against the Jets' first team, and you get to see all the other Jets, the defensive players, Sauce Gardner, DJ Reed, which we haven't seen all preseason, all the top defensive players and offensive players for the Jets play. So that is definitely exciting to watch on Sunday. And then a couple of weeks from now, you got the first game of the season. And I think the Jets play on the 11th. The Giants play on the 11th as well. So I guess the Titans. Yes, it's going to be fun. And the season's right around the corner. And if you're a Jets and Giants fan, hopefully it's a good season for both. The Giants are expected to win, some people think, eight or more games. One could only hope. <laughs> the Jets are expected to win six, but I think they could win more. If everything falls right for them and the players that they drafted turn into the players that everybody believes they're going to be in the future. 